Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to worship this morning at Tewksbury Congregational Church on the July 16th, 2023. If I'm a little off today, it's because I'm usually a little off. Um, we had a tornado warning, and yet you folks came out. The Spirit of God is alive and well in this place. Thank you for being here. Please, uh, those of you who are on the ends of the aisle, take the friendship pads, complete them, pass them on to your neighbor. Um, those of you on Facebook, you may now begin submitting your prayer requests, your praises, um, anything you'd like to let us know about. I've got a great announcement. The uh, Church World Service school bags are done. We have enough. They're all complete. I get a big thumbs up from Carolyn. Um, so thank you all who, who have contributed to that ministry. We will be uh, uh, celebrating our Galilee Cafe on Tuesday uh, with hot dogs, hamburgers, various salads of all sorts, and, um, and des desserts. So uh, at that time, we will also be honoring and, and really celebrating Sven Hybert's citizenship. So please come and you may want to dress appropriately for someone who's becoming a citizen. Um, our Bible study continues with a new session. We're starting a new session on um, Jesus' statements of I am, who Jesus says he is. Um, so it, it's a great study. Please come Wednesday night starting at 6.30 for fellowship. The study starts at 7.00. Our second service is today, um, so those of you who feel you'd like to come or need to come, um, we will be here. Uh, and in between, we will be serving uh, iced tea, cookies downstairs. There are also bagels from Perfectos that you can take with you. So uh, please enjoy for a time of fellowship after the service down in the vestry. We won't go on the lawn. Thank you. And let's continue to worship our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Mike, and good morning once more. It's good to see you all. Let us stand and join in our call to worship. From far and near we gather, built into one body. May God guide our steps and direct our ways. Let us pray together. Holy Spirit, flow through our worship. Dwell in us this day and all days. Speak through your words, breathe into our thoughts, and gather us together as one community of faith. Build us together on the foundation that is ours in Christ Jesus, our cornerstone. Flow through our days that we may be reflections of your presence. In your holy name we pray. Amen. And now let us sing hymn 23 together. All creatures of our God and King. 23.
together the prayer that Jesus taught the disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. remain standing. Let us pass the peace of loving God as one another. Pass that peace. Good morning. morning. On this questionable weather day, I will be reading the scriptures from Romans 8, 1 through 11. But first, let us pray. Christ is our peace, reconciling us with God and with one another. In our very lives, Christ dwells, full of mercy and grace to draw us to the heart of God. Help us understand this is in the reading of your word. Amen. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and to deal with sin. He condemned sin in the flesh so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit set their minds on the things of the spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, you are in the spirit, since the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will 
give life to your mortal bodies, also through his spirit and dwells in you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, we have a special hymn today. Uh, Linnea and her Lutheran uh, roots has recommended that we sing this. And just to let you know, uh, there were four churches that came together in our history, and one of those was the Ev Evangelical Lutherans. So we have that part of our history. Uh, if you would, please stand. We're going to sing from the screens only. Lord, let my heart be good soul. Let us sing together. So I'll sing the uh, song through once, and then please join me the second time. Good morning to you once more. I want to take a point of privilege. I want to ask, do you have a tornado plan? <laughs> Something I'm very aware of. With. If you do not have a basement, go to the center room of your house. If you do not have a good center room of the house, jump in your bathtub and put a pillow over your head. I'm very serious. Maybe it will save your life. A good friend of mine, Edie Fuller, I was her pastor. A tornado came right over her house, and she jumped in her bathtub. And guess what? It was the only thing left. Anyway, please be careful. We have a thread all day. I love the phrase by the Apostle Paul. No condemnation. How many of you have felt condemned from time to time? A person judging you. A person putting you here in this box. Maybe they do not know the context of your life. But God loves us regardless of where we are in life. No condemnation. This is a beautiful phrase. Chapter 8 of the book of Romans is the height of what Paul was trying to prove to the people who were listening. As he wrote this book to the church in Rome, this new faith growing out of Jesus Christ and his words of grace, these followers, these early followers, they were trying to figure it out. 
And the Apostle Paul would go around the known land of that time to any square and he would debate with people what Christ meant. This guy was unapologetic, he was outspoken, and sometimes he would get on your nerves. And I don't know about you when you read his epistles. Maybe sometimes he gets on your nerves. When Paul, in his letters, these epistles were canonized, the people, the group that got together, the priests, they felt that he was divinely inspired. And I totally believe that. He was trying to figure out what Jesus Christ meant to the world. And he had that experience on Damascus Road, and before then, he sounded like a horrible person. You've heard this story. He oversaw the, the, the martyrdom of Stephen. From what we know, the first Christian to die for his faith in Christ. Yet, Paul would change. So much so, he would change his name from Saul to Paul. Back then, when you had a traumatic change in your life, you wanted to be known in a different way because people knew you this way. I've met people from prison that when they got out, maybe they would use their second name or their first name because they may go back to their community and they wanted people to know them in a new way. How many of you have condemned somebody and as you became older and more mature, you wanted to be known in a new and different way? You repented of that sin, that failure in your life, and you wanted to know that people... You wanted to know that the people out there, that you were different. There's a friend of mine I was talking to recently that was bullied a lot when he was younger. And guess what? He confronted one of those bullies at a high school class reunion. How many of you love to go to these reunions? You all sitting around, it's like, oh, all my friends have gotten so old. What happened to you? Where did your hair go? He confronted this person. The person didn't remember. And he had a hard time letting this go. You know, back then that person had condemned him and picked on him. And now he was faced with this. Do I continue to condemn him for how he was in the past? Do you see what I'm saying here? There's a message in this of forgiveness. Have you ever heard of gossiping granny? You ever heard of Gossip and Granny? Well, Gossip and Granny knew everybody in her community. And she condemned them all. They were never good enough. They did this in their lives. She would pick on them. Ever had anybody like that in your community or somebody you know? Maybe even in your family. Well, one day she came upon some magic soup. This is not my story. And she ate the soup. And in the future, guess what happened? Every time she started to gossip, she would speak in incoherent words. She would say this, and it would come out, dabba, dabba, <laughs> like that. And she couldn't condemn anybody anymore. Poetic justice? I don't know. You know, the Apostle Paul, in other parts of his epistles, he, he compared our words of condemnation and our fights to, like, banging cymbals. How many of you love banging cymbals? It's okay in a marching band, right? But what about if I was in here banging two cymbals together? You would want to leave. I remember one of the churches I pastored, I, I wanted to exhibit this. So I brought a pot, a pot from home and a wooden spoon. And I started my sermon by doing this. This church didn't like anything like that. They did it, but anyway, the point is clear. If I got up here and did, did hellfire and brimstone and condemned you to hell contrary to the words of God and the grace that we receive, would you listen to me? Would you shut me out? That's what happens with judgmental people that condemn others. And here is the Apostle Paul taking the lessons of Jesus Christ. Back then it was an oral tradition. The, the Bible had not been canonized. They didn't have all the stories written down, but Paul knew enough to be inspired by Jesus. And he was trying to figure out what Christ had done for them on the cross and in the resurrection. And he would often use the word flesh in a negative tone. How many of you love the word flesh? Isn't that a wonderful word? Well, the flesh, sin, the laws. How many of you love a good law or two? 
You know, I got this theory. I, I haven't heard a scholar say this, but here, here's my interpretation. When the Jews came home from Babylonian captivity, they had continually, many ways, betrayed God. The prophets would cry out, don't, this, don't do this, don't turn from me. And then some invader would come from a foreign land, and guess what? They were in captivity. And I'm guessing when they returned home, they wanted to do it right. How many of you want to do it right in life? How many of you want to live by the teachings of Jesus Christ fully, embracing it, where other people see Christ or you? So they wanted to take this, these teachings from the Mosaic laws, and they wanted to do it right this time. They did not want to fail God. So they came home. They rebuilt Jerusalem and the temple. They rebuilt their lives. They wanted to do it right. But you know what happens? There's laws and rules. What happens? Sometimes we put them before God. And I'm pretty sure that's what Jesus was preaching against. How we take something because we think we're doing it right and we become self-righteous. Self-righteous. I don't want to be self-righteous, but from time to time, I become self-righteous. So I'm definitely not judging you. I hope I'm not judging myself. I'm saying, hey, Jesus, help me and clean me of my biases, my implicit biases. Make me whole and new so I can see people in a new light. Don't, don't let me go there. And they were there. And they had these rules. 613 of them. This was their law. This included the Ten Commandments. Have you ever heard of those? These rules that they were called to live by. But sometimes the rules become bigger than what we're taught, God's grace in Jesus Christ. So here's Paul building this case. And he gets to the climax of the point. This is the thesis of his paper. There is no condemnation in Jesus Christ. If we go to the end of chapter 8, do you know what he's going to say? I believe it's verse 31 in this chapter. There is nothing that can separate us from the love of God. And if that's good enough for us, isn't that good enough for other people? Now, condemnation has hit really home with myself and my family. My parents were up the week before last, and guess what? We went on the Boston bus tour, and it was hot and humid. And we made a mistake of doing this during rush hour. <laughs> it rained. A tropical rainstorm. Where am I? I felt like I was in Florida on the coast. So we're riding around. You know, there's Paul Revere's house. And you drive right by. It takes about a minute. And then you go over to the U.S. Constitution. I, I did not know there were four of them, but there's only one left. They've taken real good care of it, by the way. And you ride around, and you know, you see the Bunker Hill Monument. These are all cool. There's a lot of history here, right? We've been around a lot here. So we're riding around, and we had my Laney with us. And she was so excited. She'd never been on a bus like this, and she was making her happy sounds, and her eyes were wide open. She could hardly contain herself, and she was having a good time. And then there was this lady sitting over to my right that complained the whole time. Didn't understand thought we were bad parents. And when we got off the bus tour after two and a half hours of that heat and humidity, our little Laney was still excited, and that woman says, oh man, the tour's over, and she finally settled down. These are things that we live with from time to time. Why is it so easy to condemn people? Do you have a few uh, rules and laws in your life that people must live by? And what happens when they don't do them? This is contrary to Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul figured it out right. He was figuring out what Jesus did on the cross and he says simply, there is no condemnation. No condemnation. There's no room for gossiping grannies. There's no room for our condemnations in our lives. Now, we may feel a certain way. We may totally believe that. But, that, but does that come before the love of God? 
for us and for others. Man, we need that today. We need it more than ever. We need to quit listening to the, this outside world with all its clamor, promoting division. Kind of fleshly, isn't it? I want it my way. But that's contrary to the teachings of Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul was preaching salvation to all people. Say all. Can you say it like me a southerner? All. Not just a particular group that thought they had it right. I'm not picking on the Jewish people. It wasn't all of them. It was those in authority. Because the rest of the people felt just as well. I'm guessing scholars say 90% of them. That's a lot. That's a lot of people to put in a box. This message is for all people. There should never be condemnation. Thank you, Apostle Paul. With all your theology that's created so many denominations, I wish we could stop at this one and hear that he was inspired by Jesus and his words and the power of the Spirit that he talks about as well to guide us all. If that Spirit is in us, may the Spirit lead us to a time and place where there is no condemnation of others. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Would you pray with me? Great and wonderful God, we thank you for this challenge for Scripture today. The Apostle Paul, he got it right. There is no condemnation in you. There is nothing that can separate us from the love of God. And may that be the same for our neighbors. May we never condemn. May we spread your grace and love. May we be your light. And may others know that they are loved. For all the people out there that feel alone in darkness, may we as Christians... Give, a, give the good news to them to let them know that they are not alone, that we are there for them, and that you definitely love them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now it's time for our prayer request. Uh, Susanna is going to come forward and lead us. Good morning. I'm asking for prayers for two newborns and their families as they heal from surgery and illness. Sue Bradley is asking for prayers of thanksgiving that Kate's surgery went well. And continued prayers for Jeffrey as he heals, and we hope to see you soon. Are there any other prayer requests? Yeah. Yes, Robin. So Robin's asking for prayers for her hometown in Ludlow, Vermont, that has had extreme flooding, and her street that she lived on has been completely washed out. So prayers for all those people up there that that natural disaster and flooding recedes. Let us be in the spirit of prayer. <laughs> Lord, hear our prayers today. Thank you for your word today, a challenge to us to remind us that we are not condemned, that we are loved. There are no rules or laws that separate us from that love because of what Jesus has done for us through his teachings, through his death, and most definitely through the resurrection. We lift up the names of those prayed for today, O oh God. For whatever battles that's going on, we know you're there, shining light into the situation. Help us always to be your followers and lead us to them to help. Lord, in your mercy, hear these names today, as well as those on our prayer list. Many of these prayer requests have been on there a long time. And we know, oh God, that you love these people and shine light into their situations. Almighty God, uh, I pray that nobody was hurt today in our weather that surrounds us. Keep us safe, 
help us to have a plan. And thank you. Thank you for always, always inspiring us to protect our neighbors who also may hurt from these things. Almighty God, guide our church in the power and grace of your Holy Spirit to always do your will. Thank you for calling us to be the church of Tewksbury, planted here to share your grace and love. In Jesus' name, amen. Now let's receive our morning offering. Gracious God, we thank you for the offering this morning, provider of all things, so much abundance. Let us share with you now, let us give to glorify you. May we use this offering so others will know the name of Jesus. May we use this offering in service to you this day. Amen. Now let us sing once more hymn 40 for the beauty of the earth. Hymn 40.
chairs in the vestry for refreshments. And I know all of you need some hydration right now, right? And do not forget that next Saturday, here in the sanctuary at 10 a.m., we will meet and celebrate Sue Appleby's life, our dear friend that we miss. This is totally inappropriate. I'm sorry to break protocol, but these flowers were given to us yesterday by the family of Courtney Rowe. We had our, our celebration of life for Courtney here yesterday, and they asked that these flowers be left here for us to enjoy today. Corky was here a short time, but that did not stop him for doing uh, ban Operation Bandana, sending bandanas to let uh, God's children, particularly those in the service, civil servants, know that they were loved and never alone. And within that was Psalm 91. Go home and read that. I think it will inspire you. Let us go forth in God's grace and love. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.